Hello guys and welcome to DTWG the prep welcome. Okay, so in today's video I'm going, going to be um, taking you through some um, GED science practice um, questions on balancing chemical equations. Okay, so there are five questions I have on this slide. Four here, there's another one that talks on uh, conversation of mass, the law of conversation of mass, which you need to know. Okay, so please stay to the end of the video. Okay, please. All right. And I believe once we go through all these questions, any questions on your GED science that is on balancing equation, you would get it. Okay, there's always a question that comes out from balancing equations, always repeated. All right. Most students on our Facebook group have always um, um, spoken about that. And there's always, you have, there's a chemical equation for you to balance. So it's good. You know that before you do your test okay so we'll be doing some GED science and please if it's your first time on this channel um, DT WGD prep uh, we provide free videos on maths um, science social studies and RLA you can check that uh, you know the playlist of several videos that will help you and also uh, we have summary notes on our website for your science and also your SSS, SS uh, social studies, all right, study guides, practice questions that you can use to maths you can use, okay, on our website, all right, so you can check that out and please subscribe, all right, and give this video a thumbs up to support us to grow, okay, so now, and also if you require one-on-one -on -one tutoring, Math tutoring, all right. Uh, I can I offer that. I would leave all the links, uh, my email, in the video description box of this video. Okay, and uh, the Facebook group, you're interested to join over nine thousand members in the community, uh, which would help you support you. You know, if you have questions about GED in your states, how to go about it. You know, any question you have, just feel free post on the group. Very supportive group, great group that will support you to get your GED. Okay. Now, the first question here is, which of the following equations is correctly balanced? Now, in balancing equations, chemical equations, I mean, all right, we should know some key things. I'm going to explain them. All right. Now, what you see here is called a chemical formula. I hope you know chemical formula is when like two or more elements uh, uh, come together or just uh, one element like here this is just iron here this is um, iron oxide okay and um, what should I mean this little numbers you see low, uh, um, down here they are called what subscript while these numbers these bigger numbers you see here they are called what coefficients Okay, and they are class in multiplier. So um, this um, lower so uh, subscript also, they are, they are like, um, how will I explain? They indicate the number of atoms of this element. Like here, we have two atoms of iron. We have three atoms of oxygen coming together to react. Okay, having this chemical with formula. Are you getting my point? While this whole um the thing we have here plus giving us this is called a chemical equation okay so these are the key terms that you need to know so all this here is called chemical equation why each of them is called known as chemical formula this is a coefficient two is a coefficient that acts as a multiplier it multiplies this okay while this subscript uh, shows the number of atoms in an element all right so that's just a brief summary. Now to answer this question, it says, which of the following equations is correctly balanced? Now to balance the chemical equation, what you do is, according to the law of conversation of mass, the number of atoms of all elements on this side of the equation must be equal to the number of atoms of all elements on the other side of the equation. This side of the equation is the reactants. It's where two reactants come together. And here is the product that it gives. That's why you can see this arrow. Reactants to what? Product. Okay? 
two things that come together to react, they're known as reactants, while this the what res, it gives us the resultant uh, uh, the result is known as what the, the product. So every atom here must be equal to every atom here. That's the law of conversation of mass. So please, I need you to stay to the end so I explain that particular law so you know it well. And as a question, um, uh, I'm going to use to explain it to it. Okay. So here we now have to check. So if you have ion here, if ion is two, you have two atoms of ion. On the other side, ion has to be also two. So you can see here that two times Fe is what two. Okay. Now let's go. Let's see how many oxygen do we oxygen atom do we have here? We have this is three, and this is one. When you don't see any number here, it means this is one. This is one, and this F here is also one. Okay. So we have three plus one, four. How many do we have here? Now this is two. Now I said this three is like a coefficient. So this three multiply these two atoms to give us a total of what? Six atoms of oxygen. Why this three multiply carbon to give us a total of three carbons of what? Um, three atoms of carbon. All right, so you can see we have six oxygen here. But we just have how many oxygen? We have how many oxygen here? Three plus one, which is equal to four. Okay, so it means that this first equation is in balance. Now let's check, check the second one. The second one is okay. Let's check the second one. So here we have uh, three oxygen. Um, ion is um, correct. We have two atom of ion here. Two atom of ion here because we have to check each element now here we have three atoms of oxygen here now this three will multiply there's a one here one here as a subscript okay three we multiply this one here and we have a three so oxygen is a six here that's three plus three six okay and here too this three times um two six okay so it let us see if this will be the correct let's now check for carbon carbon is three here and also carbon is also three three times this one here is what three so you can see this is the correct option but let's check if the if this one also is you know let's just confirm you know as i as we do it together you you understand better so here we have f2 this is also f2 so ion is okay yeah okay here now this is uh, three atoms of oxygen and two times two times one two so that's three plus two for the oxygen we have five atoms of oxygen but here we only have two two atoms of oxygen so this is wrong it doesn't balance okay so balancing an equation is just having you know every element that is in the equation okay on this side the number of atoms must equate this to the uh, of the same element on this side they must be equal okay now let us check this this is two atoms of ion also two atoms of ion correct this is three oxygen this is uh, one oxygen okay that's three plus one total atoms of oxygen here we have four Okay, let's check how many oxygen do we have here. Okay, correct. We have what? Four. Two times two will give us what? Four. So oxygen is four here. Okay, so always remember that this um, coefficient is a multiplier that multiplies the subscript. Okay, so don't get confused. Okay, don't worry. We'll do more examples and you see. All right. So oxygen is balanced. So let's check for carbon. So we must check for each element. So see, carbon here is one. But coming here, one time, uh, two times one here is two. Carbon is one here, and carbon is two. It is not what's equal. Okay, so this equation isn't also balanced. So our right option here is this, where we have two ion, two ion, correct. We have three oxygen, and three times one, which is three, a total of six oxygen here. And here, three times two, which is six, which is correct. Okay, the oxygen atoms balance the oxygen atom on 
on this side. These are left, um, left and right. Now let's uh, confirm from carbon. 3 times 1 here. We have 3 carbon atom here on our left hand side. And here we also have 3 carbon on our right hand side. So this is a balanced what, equation. Okay, so B is the right answer. Now let's go to the next one. Now it says, which chemical equation correct, uh, correctly illustrates the following statement? Magnesium bonds in oxygen to produce magnesium oxide. Okay, so this is like testing your knowledge of um, the periodic table. You don't need to memorize the periodic table, but you just need to know which is just a, a you know, an element and which is a compound. Okay, like when you have magnesium oxide, this is a compound right magnesium is just an element so when it's magnesium we're just looking for one element which is what mg right so from this option <laughs> i would just quickly go to b because it says magnesium bonds in oxygen so magnesium plus oxygen this is the only option here where only magnesium as a as an element oh no okay you have magnesium here and also oxygen here okay so we can strike out you can see the way we can easily strike out the wrong ones so we can strike out this and also strike out this so we're looking at these two all right magnesium bonds and oxygen this is also magnesium bonds and oxygen okay to produce okay to produce magnesium oxide okay now so to produce magnesium oxide so you can see this wrong this produce both oxygen and magnesium all right, these are two elements. Okay, two separate elements. So this is wrong. Magnesium oxide is a compound which would would which the chemical formula would be MgO together. All right. So this is our right option. We can also check. All right, if our, our equation is balanced, you can see here we have two magnesium. Remember, when you just have an element, you don't have the sub, uh, subscript. There's a one here. Okay. So this is 2 times 1, this is 2. Magnesium here also is also 2, so it's balanced. Oxygen here is 2 atoms, and 2 times this one here is 2, so this is balanced. B is the correct option. Now, let's look at this. It says, when propane bonds in air, it reacts with oxygen, O2, to form carbon dioxide, CO2, and water. Okay? Are you saying which balanced chemical equation describes this reaction so propane which is this bonds in air o2 to form carbon dioxide and h2 so we have to now go through these options to check which is balanced all right which is the balanced what chemical equation so let's check together now the first one we have c3 here carbon is three and on our right hand side carbon is just one so this is not balanced we don't need to start looking at the remaining uh, elements okay when one is wrong it is not balanced when one element the atoms here is not balanced with the one on the right hand side it's wrong okay here also uh, c is um, three atoms carbon is three atoms carbon is still one atom this is also wrong okay here Carbon is three atoms, and here carbon is three atoms, okay? That's three times one, three, okay? So carbon is right. Let's check for hydrogen. H is hydrogen. Let's check if hydrogen would balance here and here. So here, hydrogen is eight. But let's go to our hydrogen. Hydrogen is just two here. So this is not what's balanced, all right? So wrong. So now let's check here. Carbon is three here. Carbon is three here, three times one, three. So carbon is good. Let's check for hydrogen. Hydrogen is eight here. Okay, you can see this. Four times two is eight, good. So hydrogen is good, balance, balance. Let's check for oxygen. This is five times two, which is 10. And where's oxygen? We have oxygen here and here, let's check. So this is three times two, which is six. Then here we have another oxygen atom, which is four, times um, one here. Okay, there's always a, a subscript of one. Four times one is four. And when we add this, we have 10. 10 here, 10 here. So oxygen is balanced. So our right uh, balanced chemical equation here is option D. Can you see this? All right. 
and I'm sure by now, any question you see on balancing the equation, you're going to get it, okay? Have that confidence, all right? And if you have any other question, you can always feel free to drop it in the comment section or come on the group, take a picture and send on the group and I'll be there to support you, okay? That's on the Facebook group. All right. So now, this says in photosynthesis, carbon dioxide and water are converted to glucose and oxygen. The net unbalanced equation for photosynthesis is given. Write the balance equation. Okay, so now this is tricky. When you're not given, um, you know, options, you're just told to fill in the box. All right, <laughs> so this is tricky, but it's still the same process. Now, let us balance this equation. Here, we just have one carbon atom, but on this side, we have six, right? So the right way to balance, quickly balance our carbon, okay? Just, first of all, just forget about other elements, is to put a six here, right? So six times this one here will give us six, and this is six. So carbon is balanced. We balance carbon. All right, let's uh, find, go to the other element. So here now, we now have, um, for oxygen, we have 6 times 2, which is 12, all right? And oxygen, yeah, 1. Oxygen is 13. But leave, leave out oxygen for now. We have a O2, an oxygen here that we can use to balance any other oxygen, all right? So, but let's try to balance our hydrogen. Now, to balance the hydrogen, okay? Hydrogen here is 12. Hydrogen here is just 2. To balance hydrogen, I can put a 6 here. 6 times this 2 here is 12, right? So, and 12 is already here. So, hydrogen is, ba is balanced, all right? So, it means now, since I've balanced carbon and hydrogen with this, it means I don't need to put any other number, any other coefficient here. All I need to know is, all I need to do now is, check out how many oxygen I have here and try to balance it out on this side of the equation, on the right-hand side of the equation. So here now I have 6 times 2. We're looking at oxygen now. 6 times 2, which is what, 12 atoms. And 6 times this oxygen here has a coefficient of 1. 6 times 2 here, which is what, uh, six, sorry, 6 times 1 here, which is what, 6. So 12 plus 6, what would that give us? That would give us what? 18. All right. So 18, we have 18 uh, oxygen here. Now on this side of the equation, we already have 6 oxygen here. Since we can't add any other thing, since C and H is balanced, if we put any coefficients here, it's going to affect, it means we have to now change this 6 to another number or a higher number to balance it out. All right. So we have 6 oxygen here already so it means we need 12 oxygen we need to add 12 oxygen to this here okay to this oxygen here to make this 12 so that it balances out so it becomes 18 and what 18 and to do this to make this 12 we just add a 6 here you get you see my point so 6 times 2 is 12 so this equation now is balanced and we can also we can calculate it again Leaving our six there, calculate to check if everything is balanced. So here we have six carbon on, on our left hand side. We have six carbon here. So carbon is okay. Okay. Now let's go for oxygen. We have 12 oxygen and we have six here. That's 18. Here we have six oxygen. I will have two times um, uh, six times two, which is twelve. So eighteen oxygen, correct. Then for hydrogen, we have six times two, which is twelve. And on this side, we have twelve hydrogen atom. You can see here we've written our balance for equation. Do you see that? So our balance equation is six CO two plus six H two O will give us C six H. 12O6 plus 6O2. We have balanced this equation. All right. So now uh, I think I have something. I think I have something here for you to note, like a note. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
like a tip. So you note that in balancing chemical equations, only the coefficients are changed. These numbers are changed. The subscripts never change. So you don't touch, you don't tamper with the subscripts. Okay, you can see everything we've been doing. You don't tamper with these subscripts. It is only the coefficients that you can change and tamper with, okay? That you can um, uh, make it um, six or whatever number just to balance out. You can see this is four here, this is five here. It's just for the equation to balance out. But the subscripts, you never change them, okay? It's never would altered, all right? So please note this. Now, let me... Let's go to our final question, which is on on um, conversation, uh, the law of conversation of mass. One minute, please. Trying to to go to the next slide. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. Now, look at this question. It says. The law of conversation, con, um, conservation, sorry, I always say conservation, conservation of mass states that matter is neither created nor destroyed in normal chemical reactions. In the chemical reaction below, the symbols A and B represent reactants, which I've told you, this side represents reactants, and the symbols C and D represent what product. The masses of A, B, C are given, which are this. When the reaction goes to completion, how many grams of substance D will be produced? So, how many grams of D will be produced? Now, you know, the principle is known as what conservation of mass, during which, during a chemical reaction, matter is neither created or destroyed, which is stated here. Okay? So, um, in other words, during a chemical re reaction, the amount of matter does not change. Okay, and which totally means that the total mass of reactants will always be equal to the total mass of what product. That's what I just, well, that's what we did here. The total mass here will always be equal. The number of atoms here will always be equal to the number of atoms on the product side. Okay, so whichever mass, let's say you, uh, they said uh, um, the masses of A and B is what, 4.6. Um, and B is what, uh, 7.3 grams. Okay, we are giving C as what, 9.2. So this plus this must equal to this plus this. Are you getting me? The total mass of reactants will always be equal to the total mass of the word product. So what is 4.6 plus 7.3? I'll give us 9.1. 4 plus 11 is 11, um, 7 is 11, that's 11 11.9, right? So if this is 9, C is 9.2, what would D be? This is a total. You know, this is math also, it's like a word problem too in math, okay? So you just say, let D be what X, right? Okay, the easiest way, is, <laughs> let me say I want to do a word problem here, or the easiest thing is just to subtract 9.2 from what 11.9 and you get d okay so let's do this so subtract 9.2 now this we did plus so that's 9 minus this that's 7 and here we borrow one here 11 minus 9 that's 2 so 2 point what 7 so d will be what 2.7 are you getting me to confirm let's do 9.2 plus 2.7 we must get 11.9 all right 9.2 plus 2.7, that give us 9, and this will give us 11. So here is 11.9, here is 11.9. Are you seeing that? So it means 2.7 watts is the correct watt mass of what D. So you just put your 2.7 here, all right? So you can see that always in a chemical reaction, it must follow the law of conservation of mass, which states that matter is neither created nor destroyed in a normal chemical reaction. So the total mass of reactants must be equal to the total mass of products. And that's how you balance a chemical equation. The total number of atoms of every element on this side must be equal to the total number of atoms of every element on the, uh, the right-hand side. Okay? So, so reactants mass must be equal to the product mass. So 
this is all about balancing chemical equation. And I know with this video, by God's grace, any question you come across in a balancing chemical equation on your test, you know, it's just going to be a bonus for you, right? All right. I believe in you and be confident in yourself. All right. So thank you for staying to the end of this video. Um, please like and subscribe to this channel. Give this video a thumbs up. Have any questions, please feel free to drop it. I will drop all the links to the Facebook group, the study guides in the video description box of this video. And uh, finally, don't forget that Jesus Christ is coming soon. Please do give your life to Christ, for he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life, okay? He's the one who's going to lead us to heaven at last. There's life after death, okay, which is eternity, all right? So uh, no one can deny the existence of God, no one, okay? Because in every man's spirit, there's always an acknowledgement that there's, there's a higher power than he himself, and that power is none other than the power of jesus okay the power of god okay jesus who is the son of god and he's calling you today okay to just invite him to your life so you know it takes over everything disturbing you and you know give you a brand new life give you joy peace and even give you heaven on earth here all right so he's calling you today accept him and you know turn away from every um, wrong ways and he would be with you. So thank you and stay tuned to our next video. Bye.